I was so excited for week 13. I mean, we had Mahomes Burrow. We had the 49ers Dolphins. We had Deshaun Watson's Cleveland debut. We had Jamison Williams NFL debut. What could go wrong? Well, how about every important player getting injured? How about Lamar Jackson, Jimmy Garoppolo, Jalen Waddell, Kenneth Walker, Aaron Jones all going down? How about Deshaun Watson turning into a pump? We got a lot to talk about, but before we get into any of it, make sure you go down there, drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. If you have any questions, of course, you can drop them in the comment section. And in the comment section, you can find a link to Underdog Fantasy, where they have all these cool player props. And when you sign up for Underdog with promo code Flock, they're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. And only with promo code Flock are you going to get a free Alvin Kamara bet this week. Alvin Kamara, more. More than less than half a total yard. Keep in mind, if you signed up to Underdog before Friday with promo code Flock, on Sunday, you got the Patrick Mahomes free bet. So I'm sorry, if you got the Patrick Mahomes free bet, you're not going to get the Alvin Kamara free bet as well. This is only for the people who signed up over the weekend and on Monday morning. But I think that should be it. You can find the link in the description in the comment section. Let's go ahead and let's dive into our first lesson learned. And that is Christian Watson was put on this earth to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to score touchdowns. I was saying, while I'm rooting for the guy, why we have him everywhere in best ball, I thought there was no way he was going to keep up this pace. Christian Watson going into this game over the last three contests had 12 receptions, six touchdowns, 50%, and I repeat, 50% of Christian Watson's receptions turned two TDs coming into this and keeps it up. Oh my gosh. With Christian Watson, three receptions, 48 receiving yards, and the receiving touchdown. But on top of this, he's coming away with the 46-yard rushing touchdown as well. So off a three-reception day, I mean, I don't know how he continues to do this. The man drops over 23 fantasy points. My best ball teams love it. Thank you, Christian Watson, for carrying us on underdog, especially in a week where our guy Jalen Waddle went down. Oh, my gosh. Let's go over to the Jets offense. With the Jets, very intriguing. Obviously, they trail the entire game. They try to make it a game at the very end here. But I want to say the main takeaway, the number one takeaway is Garrett Wilson is him. Garrett Wilson is him at the Garrett Wilson is that dude. Garrett Wilson coming through with 15 targets, eight receptions, 162 receiving yards. If I told you to play Godwin, if I told you to play Mike Evans, if I told you to play any of those guys over Garrett Wilson, I'm sorry. Clearly, he is someone that you should be very excited about. I mean, Mike White had 57 pass attempts in this game. My white wasn't phenomenal. I mean, uh, QBR 23, but still, I mean, the volume, volume, volume. And now going over to the running back room, I thought Bam Knight was someone that I didn't want to start. I mean, I owe you an apology if I told you to bench Bam Knight. I thought that there was a lot of uncertainty with this running back room. I didn't know if we were going to get this turned into a three-man running back by committee with Bam Knight, Ty Johnson, and James Robinson. And yeah, I mean, you get 28 snaps for Ty Johnson, but it doesn't matter. Zonovan Knight has 47 of them. He gets 15 carries. He gets 90 rushing yards. If you were to have Michael Carter miss next week, I think you can go ahead and play him. Now, going over to Detroit, big news in the DeAndre Swift saga. Looks like DeAndre Swift is going to be a must-start running back going forward. DeAndre Swift ends up playing more snaps here over Jamal Williams. DeAndre Swift plays 39 compared to Jamal Williams at 23 compared to Justin Jackson at 16. Now, of course, keep in mind, this wasn't a game, okay? This wasn't a game at all. The Detroit Lions boat race the Jacksonville Jaguars. But with DeAndre Swift, I mean, if you get this workload, if you get double-digit carries, which this was the first time we had that since week one, combined with his six targets in an individual game in a PPR format where we know Swift's going to be a great pass catcher, get excited. Fire up DeAndre Swift. And going over to Jamison Williams, don't overreact. Please don't drop Jamison Williams. We said not starting this week with Williams. You don't start him until we see something change on the field, but I still want to stand by the fact that I don't think Jamison's going to have a massive impact from a fantasy football standpoint this season. I think from a real life standpoint, if he can get on the field, if he can help stretch NFL defenses with his element of vertical speed, 
I think that he's going to help him on Ross St. Brown. St. Brown still will continue to crush underneath. So Jameson Williams didn't play at all. He had nine snaps. Don't drop him. I, I mean, I think that eventually you are going to get him expanded probably next week. Now, going over to the other side of this, I do want to look at Travis Etienne, who didn't have a phenomenal day. Keep in mind, it wasn't a game here between Jacksonville and Detroit. Travis Etienne had 54 rushing yards and 13 carries with Etienne. He only had three receptions, 12 receiving yards, but he played every single snap. Coming off the foot injury, some people were worried that Travis Etienne was going to be a three-down player. The man played 49 out of 56 snaps. You had Snoop Connor with four. You had Jamichael Hasty with three. So it looks like Travis Etienne is turning into one of the true bell cow running backs in the NFL. I mean, you would have thought it would have been a good matchup going up against the Detroit Lions. It kind of is what it is. I think you will get better performances going forward. But going over to Cleveland. Uh, maybe we should not have started someone that hadn't played football in two years. Maybe we should not have been excited about someone that has not played football in two freaking years. Deshaun Watson, 131 passing yards, one interception. Obviously, the Browns crush because they played the Houston Texans and the Browns have a respectable defense. Chubb doesn't do great. I mean, this offense in general just wasn't effective with Deshaun Watson under center. Like we said, I mean, you're getting safeties. You're getting defensive touchdowns. You're getting a ton of points for the Cleveland Browns on the defensive side of the ball. Watson struggles. I think at this point with him to struggle this much, obviously we're going to assume that he gets better as the season goes on. But I think we have to throw him in a bucket of saying you cannot start Deshaun Watson until we see otherwise. I mean, this was ugly. Now, going over to Washington, I owe Terry McLaurin an apology. We've been talking so much crap on Terry McLaurin, saying, oh, he's like the wide receiver 31 on a points-per-game basis. He's a mid-wide receiver 3 on a points-per-game basis. Why does everybody think that he has some elite-level option? Terry McLaurin did phenomenal this week. Terry McLaurin, I just want to give an apology because I know that we are very hard on him. Eight receptions under five receiving yards and the receiving touchdown. I, I don't know if we change our opinion of him going forward. This game did go to overtime. He had a ton of passing volume. Taylor Heineke had 41 passing attempts. You had John Dotson and Curtis Samuel both getting involved as well. John Dotson and Curtis Samuel combined for 16 targets. So if we're playing in a game where Heineke doesn't throw the ball 41 times, it's going to be maybe a little bit more difficult for all these wide receivers to get there. Brian Robinson does have pretty much every touch out of this backfield, but honestly, snaps are telling a different story. Brian Robinson, I mean, had 21 carries. He had two receptions compared to Gibson at nine carries compared to Gibson at two receptions as well. But Gibson actually played more snaps than Brian Robinson. Interesting spot. I think that Brian Robinson is going to be a fine start in any situation where you expect Washington can win. If you think Washington can win, then sure, go ahead and put Brian Robinson in there. But obviously, you need Washington playing ahead. You need them going through and being able to establish the run. But going over to Baltimore, let's just give an update with the three-man running back by committee in Baltimore. Let me repeat it. Can't start any running back in Baltimore. They're playing in a three-man running back by committee. They don't draw targets. I mean, you actually had Gus Edwards kind of getting benched for Kenyon Drake here. You had Drake with 34 snaps. Edwards with 17. Justice Hill with 17. Doesn't really matter that Kenyon Drake's the starting running back. It's a three-man committee. You're not interested in anybody. Okay, please. Let's hammer that in. Especially if Lamar Jackson's not going to be here. Port saying Lamar's not going to miss the rest of the season, but Lamar may miss days to weeks. Now, let me translate. NFL speak days to weeks means weeks to a month. That's what that means. At least in my experience, listening to these coaches, if they say days to weeks, we're assuming two, three weeks, maybe a month. It sucks. It really does. I mean, Lamar Jackson could have been, I mean, he had it in the range of outcomes to be the quarterback one rest of season. Now going over to the Denver Broncos side of things, Mike Boone doesn't play a massive role here. Mike Boone only has 12 snaps compared to Latavius Murray, 36. Honestly, this offense is so damn bad. I don't want to start anybody here. I mean, you have Cortland Sutton now dealing with the hamstring, goes down in the first half. We have Jerry Judy playing on a snap count this week. Jerry Judy only played 20 snaps. We have KJ Hamler on the IR. Obviously, Tim Patrick's on the IR. Russell Wilson looks like garbage. Yet another game not hitting 200 passing yards. Yet another game with no passing touchdowns. I think the only player you can maybe play is Greg Dolchich. And the reason for this is because every wide receiver is injured in Denver. 
So if you wanted to go through and play the tight end because someone has to draw targets, I mean, sure, go for it. Now, going over to Miami, this is by far and away the worst call that I had. Oh my gosh, the most embarrassing worst call that I had this week. Not even remotely close. Probably the worst start-sit call that we've had of the entire year. I told some people to start Jeff Wilson Jr. Sunday morning. Yeah, Jeff Wilson Jr., the guy that is in a committee running back and behind an offensive line that had multiple men down, going up against one of the toughest defenses, if not the toughest defense in the NFL. But Miami, Raheem Mostert plays more snaps. Raheem Mostert may look like he is the running back one here. In reality, I think that the takeaway is you can't start either of these Miami Dolphins running backs because it looks like it's going to be unpredictable. It looks like it is going to be a running back by committee. On top of this, I don't want to start any running back against the San Francisco 49ers. It truly was a pathetic a miserable call. I'm embarrassed for myself, and I am truly, truly sorry if I told you to start Jeff Wilson Jr. over someone like Isaiah Pacheco this morning. But going over to the 49ers side of things, looking at the pass catchers, you still have a lot of inconsistency. Too many cooks in the kitchen. You got CMC with 10 targets, Debo with 10. You get Brandon Ayuk with nine. You get George Kittle with three. Really, the only guy that was a viable player this week was Christian McCaffrey. You have George Kittle giving you absolutely nothing. I, I mean, I just think it's going to be very difficult to project any of these guys on a week to week basis. That's why we had Debo Samuel, why we had Brandon Ayuk as those mid wide receiver two to low end wide receiver two options. Because, I mean, hell, maybe next week, George Kittle's the one with the spike and Debo Samuel is the guy taking the backseat. Now, going over to the exciting game between the Cincinnati Bengals and Kansas City Chiefs, did we really learn anything here? I, I feel like not necessarily. I feel like this was just a, a good football game, entertaining football game. Not too many fantasy football takeaways. If you wanted to say Samaj P. Ryan, bell cow running back every week that Joe Mixon's out, we can say it, but keep in mind, I think that we are going to be getting Joe Mixon back this next week, so I don't think that matters too, too much. I mean, I guess we could also say that Jamar Chase is back. Jamar Chase leads the team in receiving with 97 receiving yards. Not too much to discuss if we're going to be looking at this game. Now, going over to Los Angeles, we have Keenan Allen going through and commanding every target in this offense. Keenan Allen, 14 targets. Obviously, we have a ton of passing volume here for the Los Angeles Chargers. This team did trail the entire game. What was really funny is we were looking at the Raiders being favored by one and a half points. And I was asking, how the hell are the Raiders favored in this game? And then I said, clearly, Las Vegas sportsbooks know way more than I do. So don't listen to me, but this seems very weird. And yeah, they knew what they were doing. The Raiders come out here and win the entire game. Keenan Allen, 14 targets. Very exciting. Full BBR format. Keenan Allen must start guy going forward. Yeah, Joshua Palmer with a decent amount of targets. You had Gerald Everett still has that quality option in any game. You have no Mike Williams. But going over to the other side, I, not too many takeaways with Vegas. Josh Jacobs is good and Devontae Adams is good. Okay, can we cut it there? I mean, Adams, I think you can maybe make an argument is the wide receiver one rest of season. I, I mean, the man has 12 targets, a reception, 177 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. Josh Jacobs, maybe you can make an argument that he is not the running back one, but pretty damn close to it. Another game crushing, 26 carries, 144 rushing yards. But I think that should be it for the recap. I mean, we will, of course, be updating everybody with all these injuries as the week goes on. Very difficult to know the status of these injuries on Sunday when we're not getting too many reports coming out of these teams. So we'll give you... Those updates later in the week. Just make sure you subscribe. Make sure you drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Have any questions, drop them in the comment section. And in that comment section, you can find a link to Underdog Fantasy. When you sign up with Promo Code Flock, they're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. If you signed up before Friday, you had the Patrick Mahomes free bet available to you today. But if you signed up this weekend or on Monday morning, you should be able to have the Alvin Kamara free bet available to you. But that is only with Promo Code Flock and that Kamara one will be more than less than half a total yard. But thank you again. I really do appreciate you. I really hope you have a great day. And I hope we get to see you out in the live stream Monday night after the game.